Okay, I'm on the Jubilee River here. I'm not on the Jubilee River, but on the bank of the Jubilee River. And it is the the closest the moon has been to the Earth in 20 years, according to some uh, astronomical data that is uh, on uh, news websites and astronomical websites and things like that. So I've decided to come out. I'm with my um, Panasonic SDR S50 here, which has a 70 times magnification zoom on it. At the moment I'm just um, looking at the uh, water, the reflection of the moon in the water, the river here, and it's very beautiful. The reflection of it is very beautiful. Um, they say there is a moon illu illusion when you when the moon is lower on the horizon, closer to the horizon, um, it looks bigger, which it does. Um, and they say this is just an illusion, but I, <laughs> I've seen it look so big when it's at uh, a low trajectory or closer to the horizon. And um, it's hard to believe that that is just an illusion. I mean, uh, uh, I think that what's happening is it's getting magnified somehow due to the angle of the light coming coming at you from from a lower uh, when it's at a lower altitude. I don't know why. It's not at a lower altitude, but I mean the vision of it being at a lower altitude. Uh, it's maybe something to do with the refraction of the light or something like that. I mean, but they say it's just an illusion. They say it's when it's closer to. Um, known objects like trees and houses and things like this it's just that it looks it looks bigger and then when it's above you it it looks smaller but it's hard to believe that the actual visual image itself isn't being uh, <laughs> you know magnified in real terms when you're looking at it there uh, unfortunately i've caught it a bit late i wanted to come out earlier but i forgot about it um and then maybe i could have seen what's happening but I mean I suppose if you're capturing it capturing the image of the moon on camera then that should refute the the idea that a, a real a real a genuine magnification is happening uh, and it, it should prove that whether the moon is above you or on the horizon it's the actual actually the same um, diameter visual diameter but um, I don't think we're going to be able to get it out here. Okay, we're going out of focus here. So that's becoming like a uh, an opaque white orb at the moment. Let us draw back. Okay, we're back in focus. Maybe I can draw back a lot more just to give you the whole scene here. Okay. So you can see the road lights over there. And let's give you the moon itself. There is the moon. So you can see the moon and the reflection of the moon. And what I'd like to do is zoom in slowly just so you see the zoom capability and you can see the moon properly. It's quite an impressive sight. I've already taken some photographs from the same camera by the same camera. Okay, we're zooming in and in and in. Still it's not in focus obviously. Will that focus? Oh. There is a bit of cloud underneath the moon, so this should add to the uh, the artistic, the cinematic artistic image that you'll see. And the problem is I don't know how to use my camera very well. Okay, that's in focus now, but that's nowhere near its uh, maximum magnification. But you can see it's a beautiful image. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at it in this maybe two and a half inch. Uh, viewing screen here but um, 
when it's on a full size monitor or something it looks a lot better very nice indeed let's get it to the side there so it's not plumb in the middle okay we're zooming further we're close now to the maximum right that's saying 72 I think after 70 the their enhanced uh, digital zoom kicks in which we don't really want but they're saying it's an enhanced one so that it doesn't actually lose quality but that's hard to believe but anyway you can see that it's looking fantastic now there's a there's an aircraft coming let's zoom out a little bit ah. too slow is that captured? I've lost it I think there it is but mm, I didn't catch I did not capture the moment too slow on my controls the problem is I'm in the dark here the very dark I'm having to use a mobile phone to illuminate the controls on the camera the thing is it's a clear night what I'd also like to try is okay that's the maximum magnification I'd also like to try and see if I can capture the um, the Orion Nebula I see a Orion behind me um, but there's trees in the way but maybe if I move around I'll have a go I have my doubts whether I'll capture it but you, you never know, you never know it's one of the Messier objects of course this uh, the moon on the water looks beautiful that's a fantastic scene but I suppose unless you had a much greater quality camera probably it's not going to capture what I'm seeing here anyway fantastic let's give you a bit of I'm using a tripod here that's why I'm able to keep it still when I'm not touching it that is uh, and this tripod is very good very cheap and very good, I can't remember, it's something like 20 pounds and um, it's Chinese Chinese made and it has all the features on it you'd want really, it pans quite smoothly, tilts quite smoothly even though it, that's not coming out of what I'm doing here when I'm moving because the uh, when you're focused in on the moon it, the, uh, the movement is so s sensitive it's, you're, you're going to lose it you focused on a very specific you know uh, part of your panorama so it's um, it's very susceptible to little vibrations and things like that if I'm like I'm just tapping the tripod at the moment just to show you the sensitivity when you're focused in on something so uh, acute so narrow um, I'm tapping very gently with my finger on the frame of the tripod and that's what's that's what's happening it's, it's not because of the quality of the tripod really it's, it's like I said it's because of the the fact that you're focused in on something very very uh, specific and uh, a, a small frame of view